Uh, Dean, how are you, my friend? I'm okay, mate. Yeah, I was a little bit put, my nose was put out of joint a bit yesterday by the Saudis because they came hunting at Fulham. Um, and I haven't been too bothered up to that moment. And I was like, no, no, Mitrovic, this is absolutely unacceptable. I started to, um, I started to become very unaccepting of the whole model that's being, uh, that's being imposed over there. But twenty five million pound offer for Mitro, no chance, absolutely no chance. What are you doing? I, I, I hear you. It's funny as well because I'm seeing Liverpool fans celebrating online right now. My God, we might get rid of two players that we think are past it. Fifty million, we can buy someone better. And I'm like, hang on. A week ago, so many of these same guys were talking about how money from the Middle East was bad for football. Now, suddenly, it's their Thanks, money. Man. Listen, I always say this to people. Like, everybody will condemn you know, millionaires and billionaires and the way the elites operate and where money comes from until they get money or they get, they get a chance to better themselves or their lives or their football team. And they all go very quiet. That's because the world is full of hypocrites. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and, and look, the, the big one is um, £40 million bid for Fabinho, yeah. this one seems to have come completely out of left field. Nobody was expecting this. A bit of an Ornstein dagger, as they call it on socials. But it, it just by the sounds of it, this one could really happen. Yeah, so um, it's obviously a, a breaking story right now. I mean, as it stands, that offer hasn't actually uh, been formally made, I believe, but that it is in it is in the works. Um, and Liverpool are anticipating a £40 million offer to land for Fabinho and of course it comes uh, hours after they step up a second pursuit in Saudi uh, for Jordan Henderson to go over there um, initially looking to take him for next to nothing now Liverpool putting a 10 million pound price tag on him which isn't a lot um, but if you're Jordan Henderson and someone offers you 700,000 pounds a week compared to the 200,000 that you are on now it's life changing like obviously like for me or you 200,000 pounds a week Yes, thank you. I'll never worry about anything again for the rest of my life uh, financially. But for him to go from that to seven hundred thousand pounds a week is kind of like the same principle, you know. Like for for me or you to get that sort of money is for Henderson to take this kind of further leap, which obviously sets him for life and beyond for you know for centuries to come. Um, Thirty three. It's a good offer um, for Liverpool too. For Fabinho and Henderson to go, that's a lot of experience from the squad. Like that is a that is a big chunk that you're taking out of that Liverpool midfield. And you think about okay, like Fabinho not had the best time of things and then gets his fair bit of um, um, criticism, but Henderson as well. I still think Henderson's got a quite a big part to play at Liverpool, and I think in helping reframe that Liverpool midfield. I think Henderson is probably quite crucial. So I could see in a situation here where, where Liverpool would be more keen to keep Henderson, perhaps, than Fabinho. I think Fabinho at £40 million um, is fine. I think it also means that the noise that we've heard about Thiago leaning towards staying at Liverpool would be more likely. Obviously, they've they've made the signings recently of Alexis McAllister and Dominic Sobersly, Um, and that's fine. You consider that... Uh, Stefan Bajetic made his breakthrough last season and Curtis Jones at the back of last season too. Like He was integral actually to the turnaround that Liverpool had. So what Jurgen Klopp does have to do here, he has a lot of midfield players and only three spots plus the Trent one that nobody else is going to play up for grabs. And that, that rotation is going to be difficult if there's like eight or nine of them. So to lose at least one is, is pretty important. Um, and... It'll be interesting to see if both of those guys do end up leaving. As I say, for Henderson, I feel like this is more pivotal than it is for Fabinho. Because for Henderson as well, it's his spot at the Euros next summer. Because Gareth Southgate is highly unlikely to pick him for his starting team. Maybe, he's, I mean, I don't know, maybe a squad at all. I'd imagine he'd still make it. But you don't know. Like, it's, it is a bit out of sight, out of mind for Gareth Southgate. If he can't be seeing you on a week-to-week... You are putting yourself your spot at risk there. You look at Henderson when he's come back, these videos of him in training, like the guy's absolutely ripped. Never looked in better shape. Um, not that I've seen him that many times with his shirt off. But like you look at the guy right now, like the condition of him is absolutely peak. And it had the look of me to a man that was absolutely determined to show that he wasn't done. He's like 33, I'm not finished here. Like I'm still the guy that can dictate this midfield. I'm still the guy that can get Liverpool back to where they were. And now, obviously, Steven Gerrard giving him something to to really think about. 
Mm. So it'll be interesting to see how this this um weighs up. Obviously, though, it is an extra fifty million pound that you can then put into the transfer market. Um, it would make the Lavia deal pretty much a no brainer because the Lavia deal should be around forty million pound. So it'd be basically a like for like for Fabinho, which is great. And then you've got an extra 10 million on top of the money you already had left over from your last transfer kitty to probably put into a defender. Like that's, I'd imagine what you'd be looking at then Liverpool actually probably doing. Yeah, of course. And look, I mean, I know a lot of people talk about net spend. I don't personally, I just look at money, money spent because net spend isn't real. It's based on your income versus, versus your outgoings really. But you know, they've spent, they spent 70 million on, on 70 million on Soberslight. And they're now going to get 50 million in for these two. If they'd have known that the Saudis were going to, were going to come in with this money, maybe they'd have gone and got Jude Bellingham because it's, they've, ended up, <laughs> they've ended up raising enough money to be able to do that. But maybe Liverpool will look at it as if, if we can bring in Sobersly, McAllister, Lavia, you, you may be only be able to bring in one, like one additional player if you went and got Jude Bellingham. But mm. yeah, the transformation of Liverpool's midfield could be very interesting. I know a lot of Liverpool fans online and phoned into our shows last season, believed that Henderson's absolutely finished. I know a lot of Liverpool fans that would call into our shows would say that uh, Fabinho, legs are gone, he was past it. So there'll be a lot of... There's a lot of Liverpool fans who've been asking for them both to leave, but when reality bites and they both might go and suddenly your main midfield next year are young and inexperienced and have never played for a club the size of Liverpool with the expectations... It's going to be very intriguing to see how that works out. I think in terms of quality, talent, they're buying or they're linked to top quality individuals. But as you say, that experience, because again, Liverpool's standard isn't to, to get into the top four. Liverpool's only barometer for success in the Premier League is winning it now. That, that's, that, that's where Jurgen Klopp has got them to. So the question I want to ask the Liverpool fans, and I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section below and in the live chat is, is that midfield good enough to topple Man City and win the Premier League next year because that's your target. So I'd love to understand uh, what you think and 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 feel about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean that it, it's just say for instance you had a midfield that ended up being Trent in his new position alongside Lavia with McAllister and Sobersly ahead of them. Like it's it's just very inexperienced. Like Trent is has played ten games in this position before. Lavia has played one season in the Premier League. Alex McAllister, okay, he's, he's, he's done well at Brighton over a, a period of time, but it's not like years and years. And Sobosla is brand new to the league. That's mm. very, very difficult to um, take over from Jordan Henderson, who's got 400-odd games under his belt um, for Liverpool in the Premier League, and Fabinho, who... I don't know exactly how many games he's played for Liverpool, but 100-odd, whatever it, and whatever it is over this period of time... Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of change going on. And we've we've talked and criticised, well, I've criticised Chelsea for this in, in their model, whereby it's all very well moving on to the next gen, but you can't completely eradicate the old gen because you're leaving this gap, this experience and a like football wealth gap, if you like, because they, they've built up this wealth of knowledge and experience that these guys just haven't had time to get under their belts yet. And that's why I imagine Liverpool will be trying to keep Jordan Henderson right now. Um, look, it's in Henderson's hands. They've, they've got talks today. I think by the end of the day, we'll actually know which way that one's going. Um, that's the the briefing is basically that today is extremely key in defining whether Jordan Henderson is actually willing to go ahead with this offer. It's a big deal. Like moving to Saudi Arabia is a big deal for any player. And some of the names that have gone there so far, haven't surprised me. They're players whose careers are, have hit a dead end, or that they're um, they're known for for looking for moves like that. But Jordan Henderson, at this exact moment, if it was a year down the line, I'd probably be more accepting of it. But right now, as I say, like with Liverpool in transition, him ready to fight for his place, and with the Euros at the end of the season, very very big decision for him in terms of whether he he sticks with that or takes the money. Yes, it's going to be very intriguing to see. Viewers who want to know what you think and feel, hit the like button.